Oh, it's lit. It's lit. It's lit. Okay. <gasps> Nothing like an ad hoc <laughs> IG live to get the people going or t mainly to get me going. So I'm coming at this because I'm really into the idea of having a audio journal of learnings whilst on this solopreneur journey, um, building in public, testing a lot of what I'm learning whilst coaching and being coached, sweating post shower hot. You know what I'm saying? It's fine. Everything's fine. In Denver, it's still sunny. It's literally 30 minutes to 5 PM, but here we are. And one of the, it's just so many things. Okay. I guess really about, Hey Sam, I'm just out here having an audio journal about building my business in public and the things that I'm learning as I go, because it's absolutely outrageous the amount that's being integrated. And I just feel like I have like writing it down and journaling is not enough. There needs to be some more. So for me about October, November, December of 2022, I uh, had a very intense creative chapter. Like I never, felt that I was creative before. I never thought of myself as a creative person. And I finished this program and went on a house sit by myself for a month in Austin, Texas, watched this cat. And basically it was me and this cat this whole time. And I was doing just a ton of writing, thinking, and downloading. It was so much. I mean, I couldn't go to the shower without a notebook. There was constant inflow and downloads of energy. Hey, um, and so I thought that that would go on for quite a while. And then it started to be January, February, March. And I noticed that my creativity was waning and what was increasing was anxiety, overwhelm, some, some dread that I didn't know what to do about, um, this, creativity that I just had a complete waterfall, waterfall inflow of, am I going to lose it all? And I started thinking to myself, oh, well, I have all these ideas and I've finally really honed in and rec well, rather than honing in, I recognized my zone of genius, which is speaking. And so how can I do that more? How can I ensure that all the ways I show up in the world include this that I'm really good at? And I started to consider pivoting my, my um, consultancy business from community development and a bit more into speaking, facilitation, and coaching. And I thought, oh, well, I'm going to have to leverage Instagram and I'm going to have to leverage you know, every social media that I have to include all three of those things. And they're all just going to have to happen. And I started following all of the solopreneurs you follow, all the newsletters, uh, watching the master classes, doing everything, which was only putting myself further and further into a hole of honestly the minutia of having the right processes, having the right systems, having the right tools, having the right everything without yet doing the thing, without first doing the coaching, without first doing um, the VIP days that, that I spent several months learning without first pitching to speak and, and do facilitation. I was spending all of my time in this hamster wheel of, I have to be productive for when the inevitable moment comes that I will be overwhelmed with the amount of work that I have. And guess what? I wasn't overwhelmed with the amount of work that I had. And so there was no reason for me to be in that space. And I was barely able to breathe. It felt like it felt like I was at the bottom of a hole with like a thousand pound gorilla sitting directly on my chest. It felt like only my little mouth there and my nose and my nostrils were out of the water. And so 
the shiny, the shiny object syndrome for sure, stuck in the minutia for sure. And also moving about my business in a, in a super masculine way. And, and I am on a journey of, you know, relinquish, not relinquishing, um, remembering and bringing forth my femininity. Um, so it was really noticeable for me that deadlines, permanence, performance, predictability, um, having singular focus, hoarding, hoarding my resources, hoarding my, um, ideas, hoarding how I do stuff was working against me. Like everything I just said was working against me. And I really, in the past ah, three weeks, let's be real. The past three weeks, I have intentionally and diligently tried to slow down as much as possible, which is very, uh, unusual to me. Oh my God, Ty, I'm so glad you're here because I'm literally about to talk about how I got your support from the marketing perspective. But basically I was just, I'm talking about this journey as a solopreneur and being completely and utterly stuck in the minutia of, um, having the right things, tools, systems. What do I do? How do I do it? Um, do I have to be like everybody else? Do I have to da 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 and completely being stuck in all of this when if I chose to slow down, if I chose to not fill up all the free blocks in my Google calendar with something to do to perform and ensure that I had adequate output, I could instead be adaptable, dynamic. I could be intuitive. I could be creative in flow, patient. I could share, be vulnerable, like this sort of situation. I guess being vulnerable means having my glasses off. Um, so those are some of the ways of being that I have chosen to engage in, in the past few weeks. And it's important to note because we live in a society where we live, you know, if you live in this capitalistic Western world, the perspective of I must first do these things in order to have these things and then I will be this thing. So I must, um, you know, study computer science in order to have a ton of money so that I can be rich and a millionaire and an angel investor. Whereas what if we looked at it as being first, then doing, and then you will have. So what if I showed up in each space in this way, vulnerable, in flow, um, patient, willing to share, willing to collaborate, and then abundance flows? Like maybe that could be the case. And I'm playing around with this. And in that play, I've requested help. So like Ty and Flex here and understanding that I don't have to know everything, be everything to everyone in order for me to be worth it. I can also be on my own journey. I can also be learning. I can also be coached whilst coaching, whilst sharing, whilst putting out what I'm learning into the world in a way that only adds to this place that we all live in together. Right? So this is where I'm at right now. And like what I, because I'm a person that needs to have homework and I need tangibles. <laughs> hey, and I need tangibles. I actually created a few like diagrams <laughs> that I want to share with y'all that have really helped me drill down what's most important. And if it's of interest, I'll add it to my newsletter and make sure that you are part of it. And I will add a template for you to have. So in terms of the idea of being anti doing, having, being, and instead being then doing then having, I created, um, like this then <gasps> not me being a teacher, but hello. Um, just very quickly. I think this is something you could replicate on one side is have. So these are the things I want to have in my life. They don't have to be, you know, super tangible. Like I want to dance more. I want to have slow mornings. I want to have kids. I want to have $10,000 a month. And that's probably on the low end. Um, I want to work 10 hours a week. Let's be real. I want to have, I want to be able to see and spend time with my friends and my community very often. I want to practice tarot. I want to play a lot of volleyball. 
Okay. Those are, that's what I want to have. These are the things that I want to be doing over here on the other side. So I want to host and facilitate salons like I did with Anderson Street, my web series. I want to have a women's circle. I want to work with youth. I mean, as I was doing this, this kind of came out of nowhere. It wasn't even something I've been thinking about, but it came out. Um, I want to facilitate workshops. What kinds? Where? At retreats for youth with employee resource groups. Okay. And then the middle is who I get to be. So this is where things get a little ethereal for, for our Western minds, but like what are ways of being that you can show up in a space that portray the type of person that would work 10 hours a week from home and make $10,000 a month and have a quality network and have kids and be able to homeschool them and have um, ability to play volleyball throughout the week and any day of the week that you want, right? Who do I have to be? So what I have here unattached to results. So not associating my identity with my results. That's been a big deal. In flow, rested, grounded, a visionary, exuberant, upbeat in life. You know when you're in a space and the energy is high or the energy is low. And you know that when it's low and someone may walk in or whatever, the energy shifts. You feel that. You don't have to have words for it. It doesn't have to be woo-woo. It just is like what it is. We all know there's energetic frequencies. I mean, look at the pyramids of Giza. So knowing that, if we get to generate our own energy in any moment, if it's a choice, then even I understand that this is a contentious topic. Just flow with me here. In a moment of otherwise levels five and above mental health capacity, and you're still low, like malaise, languish, blue, it could be an option that you can choose the energy level that you choose to be at. I'm low, I want to be a little more upbeat. I'm low and I want to be connected and collaborative. Let me try it on. And if you show up in that space, who knows who's going to then walk through the door, beeline to you. Hey, I, I, you look like someone I know. Do you know this person? No, but I know this person. Oh, I work for this. You do. I was just applying to that job. Like. It's not outrageous really to put those, those things together. It's not. So I'm about being, that's where I am. You can hold me accountable to that. And then in addition to these thoughts today, I had a really beauteous epiphany where I was speaking to a coach and I'd used the word barometer several times in the conversation to which she finally said, okay, what's up with you and, and this barometer idea? And I thought, okay, well, you know, there's a barometer for everything. Like there's a barometer for how successful I feel. And she said, well, it sounds a lot like how you determine yourself, not that fly, how you determine yourself is based off of societal norms of how things are done, how to be an entrepreneur, how to work for yourself, how to make money. You're going along the lines that other people have created, not you yourself. So what if you created your own barometer for success? Look, that ain't new news. But for some reason today, it hit different. Today, I was like, oh, okay. So I made another diagram because now, you know, if you didn't know, now, you know, on my whiteboard notebook. <laughs> um, hey, Denise. So my success barometer, and this is what I'm going to show you. And it would be interesting if you created something similar and I'll make a notion template and you can have it. But I find that uh, my barometer is based on a rating, right? Like from one to 10. Hey, Pauline. So I get to determine what is success for me. Sure. That makes sense. Now let's take it a step further. What is success at like, what's a one on your scale and what's a 10 on your scale? And this probably took me 30 minutes and I'm not done fully, but I did it in these buckets, one to three, four to six, seven to nine, and 10 is on its own. Cause let's be real. If you have an a 10, like, oh my God, you are really killing it at life. So it's going to be annoying to read. So I'm not going to make you read it, but this is what I've got so far on my daily success barometer so that I can reframe what success means for me. And so that I can be a little bit more gracious and compassionate with myself at the end of each day especially as it relates to me being attached to my results and identifying 
as my results. So if I said at the beginning of the day, I'm going to get these five things done and I got three and now I'm saying I'm a failure at the end of the day and I do that every day and I set myself up to fail, well, then I'll never think I'm successful and I will never take any moment ever to celebrate anything about myself. And that will not fly because that has not been fucking working for me. I don't know if that works for you. It definitely doesn't work for me. So I spend time reframing based off my original, those of you that are new, not me on my teacher tip, um, my be, do, have Venn diagram, what I want to do, what I want to have, and who I get to be in order to, to have and do those things. In my daily success, one to three feels overwhelmed, stress, anxious, more doing over being, scattered, frenetic energy, uncertain about myself, mental focus, no body focus. I'm not eating. I'm not working out. I'm probably barely sleeping. You get this gist, okay? I don't have trust in other people. I barely have trust in myself. Definitely no free time. I must do, do, do. Self beat up, super independent, don't want anybody's help. That's a one through a three. If you're rating yourself there, I think how this could work is like you inevitably take four weeks of a test and rate yourself every day and then every week to see where you sit in your own barometer of success. And your barometer of success gets to be dynamic. It can change as often as you yourself are noticing your own change, as you yourself are reprogramming your shit. Because we get to change our stories. That's the only way the life that we want is going to happen. We have to change our stories. So in a four to six, so we're still not really there, but we're better than a one to three. Feeling relief, very logic and cerebral, some imposter syndrome, more body focused. I'm sus. I'm unforgiving. I don't really know. Like, are you going to say what you said you're going to do? Probably not. I'm going to micromanage you. Definitely a little free time. This is the should area. I should do this. I should, should, should. Self-critic, no boundaries, little delegation, leaving people in the dust. So I think you get the general gist of like how these go. A 10, feeling satisfied, joy grounded, more being overdoing, led by my gut or intuition, confident, money is flowing. I don't barely have to do anything to obtain clients and uh, I don't even have to like create a sales pipeline. It's flowing. Um... I'm celebratory. There's laughter every day. Bo body, mind, and spirit is aligned. I'm trusting in the process of life. I'm not questioning it. I'm not resisting it. If I'm starting to feel, if I, if, if I'm starting to feel not good, if I'm starting to feel sick, if I'm starting to feel misaligned, if I'm starting to do too much, I'm going to take a rest. I'm going to actually just go ahead and take a nap, which I don't do because I must be doing right. It's the opposite. Um, my time is in abundance. I am able to be of service and contribute to others. I get to instead of the shoulds or the have tos. I stick to my boundaries. I accept and trust delegation and support. Big deal coming from an ultra independent only child. So what is all of that? These are the two ways I have been able to reframe in a tangible way that I can hold in a way I can look at again and be like, right, you know what? I had no fear today. There are some doors opening. I get to celebrate the small wins. I'm a seven to nine. You know what? I am. I'm going to give that to myself. That's what we get to do. The more that we do that, the more that we get to see the absolute fucking stunning beauty that is in every day, serendipity, synchronicity, um, all of the alignment that's happening in every day, waiting just outside of what we're looking at, just on the tip of our nose that we can't see because we're so busy out here that we're not right here. So that's what I'm talking about. My last step, which I get to uh, redo, but we've done the be, do, have Venn diagram. We've done our rating system, our barometer, and now we're going to do our desires forecast. So this is like, if you're a person that's like five year plans, okay, this is like kind of for you, but this is also for those people that have a bucket list, a set of things that they want to complete in life of any sort. You want to lose weight. You want to be a meal prepper. You want to um, do a triathlon. You want to get that certificate. You want to go back to school or whatever. If you've read Designing Your Life, you would know this, but this is in my now journal. So what's here is these are five years. What I did first was cut up into lines and I just started kind of 
drawing what I want and when I, not with the dates yet, not with the years yet, I just drew out of roughly what I want. So in here is like being a speaker, selling out a retreat, being a big brother, big sister, volunteer, launching my podcast, launching my VIP day offering down the line, buying a house, um, launching an e-course, facilitating a retreat, going to a Scottish castle, <laughs> um, you know, transformational coach certification, be things like that. And then the last step was I put the timeline ish, who cares, but it doesn't have to be five years. Like three of those, um, columns can be one year. It can be five years. It is up to you. It's you visually seeing your Venn diagram of be, do, have, and then with your rating system of where you're at each day and each week, determining like if I'm consistently at a one through six and I want these accomplishments in my life, I'm going to have to start celebrating myself at some point or I'm never going to get here because I'm never going to look at any of these things that I wrote here as a celebration, as an accomplishment, as something I could do. So that kind of wraps us up. That brings me to where I'm at in both the solopreneurship journey, the, the coaching, and also just, I mean, fuck it, being kinder to myself, working for myself, working by myself remotely in my house every day, day in and day out, not really having anyone to um, bounce ideas off of and instead doing it in this way. It's a lot of confirmation bias by myself about how good or how bad I'm doing. And when I get to adjust what is good and bad or fuck it, keep it out of my vernacular and instead, you know, win or learn mentality. I won today and I'm learning another day. I'm just keeping it chucking. That's really the way to do this thing because otherwise we, we are in a sprint and not a marathon of life. And we are not here for the journey, but for the destination. And if you're here for the destination, that's cool, but I'm not, you know what I mean? So if you are interested in seeing any of these things, just let me know because I don't know, this is the first time I've shared this out loud, aloud, <laughs> out loud. I've espoused it from the rooftop. So I already am going to add this to my notion and create like a little board for myself. I can certainly make a duplicable copy so that you could just have a template. But if this is something you'd be interested in kind of doing together in union with other people on like a light masterclass sort of situation, let me know in the comments. Let me know here. Let me know wherever the hell you let me know, because that would be of interest to me. So Sorry, Lindsay, you got here a little late, but I am complete. <laughs> I'm complete those days, those days that I'm still in. Um, so if you're here, thank you so much for being here. And uh, let me know if you do any of the Venn diagramming we do have, the, um, your own success barometer, and or fuck it, all of them, um, your forecast. So let's get it. All right, I'm out of here. I don't know how to get out of here, so... Let's see, is it an X? I don't really know, but ciao for now.